What up, everybody? For CM Culture, man, this is Watonio. You now tuned in to episode three of On the Racks, man. And today's episode is going to be a little bit different, man. Not only are we going to be reviewing the mixtape, but we're going to be tackling a few different topics beforehand. So first, we're going to get into the Nipsey Hustle situation. You know, a lot of people have been wanting me to talk about that. Then we're going to tackle, you know, the double XL freshman list, some people who you're going to predict to be on it, and who I would like to see on it. So, if you like to skip to any of these topics within this video, man, if you're not interested in one or the other, there will be timestamps in the description as well as in the comments below. So, let's get right into it, man. Get back, get back, get uh -oh. back, get back, 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 get back, get back, get back, get back, get back. What up, man? It's your boy, Watonio. So, man, let's get right into these topics. So, first up, man, we got the whole Nipsey Hustle situation, man. As you know, he just passed away not too long ago, March 31st, just, you know, at the end of last month. And it was a crazy, crazy, you know, experience for a lot of people, man. The internet was going crazy. So, nah, and a lot of things I've been seeing lately, ever since he passed, is, you know, people talking about other people saying R.I.P. to Nipsey Hussle, you know what I'm saying, like, it's a problem just because they weren't fans of him, you know what I'm saying, they weren't fans of his music and nothing like that, now, me personally, I wasn't necessarily a fan of Nipsey Hussle, I wasn't listening to his music, but I did know the type of person he was, like, I knew about all the stuff that he did for his community, you know, giving people jobs, I knew he was a solid dude within the industry, all types of stuff like that, so, so mainly the stuff that really mattered more important than the music, the music was just a plus in my opinion, so I feel like anybody who feel like they want to pay their respects to Nipsey Hussle and say what they want to say to Nipsey Hussle, I feel like they should be allowed to say those things because at the end of the day, he was a he he was a person at the end of the day. He was a human being. And you know what I'm saying? So we can say, you know, R.I.P. Nipsey Hussle. We can say those things about him because at the end of the day, he's a human being. We all humans, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like nobody should be getting criticized or, or crucified for saying, oh, R.I.P. Nip just because they weren't a fan of his music. You know what I'm saying? The music, like I said, is a plus. At the end of the day, he was a real solid dude. Now, also, Snapdog just released his video to uh, Nipsey Hussle. It was a Nipsey Hussle tribute. It's called Fallen Soldier. He just dropped it uh, the other day on World Star. So, um, in my opinion, I think, you know, with Snapdog being a Detroit artist, that was a problem. You know, it was a lot of people having a problem with that. People feel as though, like, why is everybody, why are we having this, you know, visual for Nipsey Hussle in Detroit? He's not even a Detroit artist and things of that nature. But a lot of people don't know Nipsey Hussle actually supported a lot of Detroit artists. He supported the Detroit versus everybody movement when it was, you know, popping and it was happening. You know what I'm saying? And, the, and you can see proof of these things on the internet. You know what I'm saying? Pictures of him with local artists, all types of things. So Nipsey Hussle was really a man of the, of the people. You feel me? He was all about helping up and coming artists and people and just, you know, people in general get they, you know, uh, shine whenever he could do it. So I feel like for people to say like, oh, why is we having a candlelight visual for Nipsey Hussle? They don't know the background. They don't know the history that he was actually been supporting Detroit. He's a big Detroit supporter. So I think it was dope. And I think it made sense for Snapdog to make this, you know, tribute to Nipsey Hussle. And, and it's not just even for Nipsey Hussle in the song. It's for, you know, anybody who, he, who you know, people have lost, you know, throughout, you know, the streets and just, you know, living the type of lifestyle they live. It's for those type of people. But it's just Nipsey Hussle just brought more of a, you know, a, a widespread awareness to it. So, you know, but that's what I got to say about that, man. So, you know, and we're going to move on to the next topic, man. Like I said, so we about to get into this, you know, Double XL freshman list, man. So, with this list, the few the few things that you know I wanted to talk about with this list was the people who I want to see on the list, and as well as the people who I feel like gonna make the list. Now, we are not we at, us here at CM Culture. We already put up a list. I think it was back in January of a few artists who we would like to see on the list, as well as a few artists who we who we predicting to be on the list, and that might change, but. The few artists that I would like to see is definitely Molly Brazy because Molly Brazy is one of the best uh, Detroit female artists 
that we have right now going up for double XL. There's nobody else really female wise going up for double XL from Detroit that I can see, you know, um, getting it. I feel like she definitely deserved it. And she just dropped her pitch video. So we're just going to check out a little bit of her pitch video and I'm going to get my thoughts on that. So let's check this, you know. What's up? This your girl Molly Brazy. And I feel like everybody should vote for me to be 2019 XXL freshman because I'm the shit. I mean, y'all watch me grow up. Like, I gave y'all a taste of every little thing from the start. You know what I'm saying? I just dropped Built to Last. So I feel like y'all already know, you know, what's coming. So <laughs> it's time. You know what I'm saying? So vote for me. <laughs> so, you know, now Molly Brazy. She, she's talking, in this video, she's talking about how she, you know, she's grown. We've seen the growth. And we definitely have seen a lot of growth from Molly Brazy. I know I have. She's one of the, like I said, one of the best Detroit female artists. She's got three projects out that I could think of so far. She's got Molly's Wear, which is her first project. She's got Big Brazy, and then she's got Queen Pen. So, and, and, and with every project, she seems to get better as far as, you know, rapping and everything like that, production quality on her videos and things like that. She, she tends to get better. Now, another artist that I wanted to see was Sada Baby. Now, Sada Baby also did a pitch video. He's also a, D, a Detroit artist that if any, out of any male Detroit artist, he's definitely one of the most diverse artists in the city. So seeing him, him up on that list would make, the most sense out of anybody in Detroit, to be honest, if you ask me, because he's one of the most diverse Detroit artists. His sound, everything he does from his, you know, dancing and all that crazy stuff he does in his music videos is definitely something that makes him stand out the most among other Detroit artists. So definitely seeing Sada Bay on that list would make a whole lot of sense. Now, other people we predicted to be on this list was Lil Mosey, Blueface, of course. Blueface, you know, just now popping, you know, just a few months ago, actually. Blueface started popping, not like, I think, I want to say summer of last year. So him being on that list, if he's on that list, it would be solely based off the of hype. I don't think Blueface is making that list because he's a dope ass artist. Because everybody know Blueface is off beat. Like he he he's he tend to be off beat. He says he does it on purpose. I don't know if that's true. Maybe he just covering that up. But Blueface, if he's on that list, it's expected because he's hot right now. He got one of the the hottest songs with Tatiana. He did two remixes to it. So him being on that list, I I wouldn't be shocked if Blueface was on that list. Also, Lil Baby. Lil Baby is also another contender. And Dub Baby, he's actually new. He's a new, even newer artist. But if he, he him be on that list, if he's if he makes that list, it would definitely be based off of hype because he's hot right now. He's one of the hottest artists right now that came out. And uh, you know, so those are basically my predictions and who I feel like should be on the list. And I know I went on and on about Molly, but that's because I really want to see her on the list out of anybody. Next to Sada Baby. So, now like I said, we got we was going to have a mixtape review. And today's mixtape review is going to be Rocky Bad's Hard Body, which is a project that I love. You know, I, I really was supporting this project when it came out. It was a project I've been wanting to review when it did come out, but I really wasn't in the mindset to do it or I didn't have... You know, I wasn't, you know, in the mode. I, I feel like if I'm going to review it, I want to do it the right way. I want to really give my uh person, my personal touch. You know, I wanted to do it on the show. I wanted to really do it on the show so people could see, you know, see what I got to say. So, basically, this was a project that came out, you know, after the whole, you know, crazy incident she went through back in 2018. And just out of respect for Rocky Bell, I'm really not going to touch on it. But if you know, then you know. But this was a project that was kind of like right after, you know, that situation happened. A few months after that situation happened. And it was a project. It was like a redemption project. Like, I'm back type of project. I was never gone. That situation not didn't hold me back. This is like, I'm still here. I'm, I survived. I'm a survivor type of project. That's what the, you know, the vibe I got from this. You know, the opening song, Dirty World. It when you when you When you hear that song... You can immediately hear the change in her voice, the change in her, you know, the way she words, you know, the way she pronounces certain things. It just always just a different vibe just off the beginning of the project. And that to me was like, OK, yeah, we really hearing the struggle from this project. This was that type. Of, it was like struck, not just struggle in life, but just struggling through the events and crazy things that she'd been through, you know, since 
this pro you know prior to this project being released so and so and then when we get into the feature territory features um Ant Beats was probably one of the best features on this project, mainly because he's a dope person to have when you want to you want a dope hook. I feel like he's the hook man. He's like Drake back in 2010. You know, he was on everybody song doing the hook. I feel like he's if you need a hook, I feel like he's dope for you know doing hooks and stuff. So, um, and then so this project to me, I feel like it it's the it's the perfect you know um evaluation of rocky bad like okay she's an artist who's been through so much and this project embodies like all the things she's been through just in life in general not just with music and stuff like that but just in life because she's been through a lot of things if you know anything about rocky then you know she's been through the wire like she's been through it all so and with her being one of my favorite rap artist period not just female you know male she's one of my favorite she is one of the best female, you know artists period like just in general she's one of the best artists period so that's why i got it you know so that's my thoughts on the hard body mixtape man but that'll pretty much wrap this up man for cm culture man it's why tonio you watch it on the racks man and we out <laughs>